Hello, thank you all for being here today. All right, I'll get started. I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, and I lived there for the first four years of my life before immigrating to the United States. After briefly living in Los Angeles and Kansas, my family finally settled down in the Bay Area in 2008, where we rented a room from some relatives. While it was nice being around people we knew in such a foreign land, I, I remember how happy I was when we first moved into our 450 square foot studio apartment that became our home for the, for, for the next 13 years of my life. Excitement was always short-lived, however, as fear became the most constant emotion in my life. Whenever classmates would ask me where I was from, I would simply start talking about Kansas, knowing that I'd assume I was born there and would just not ask any follow-up questions. It was terrifying to talk about my past or even where I lived. It just constantly felt like I was hiding in plain sight. And I'll never forget the night we heard a loud knock on our door just past 2 a.m. My father telling us to be quiet as we scurried into our tiny closet. He reluctantly opened the front door, one of the most terrifying things an immigrant man could do, to find a police officer on the other side. As it turns out, a group of teenagers had stolen his car overnight, and the officer was there to return the vehicle and ask him to press charges, something he refused to do out of fear of entering the legal system. My parents always taught me the importance of education as a means of survival and a path to better myself as a person. But even at a young age, I understood that my immigration status and my inability, and my inability to fluently speak English would pose a lot of obstacles in my path to higher education. I wouldn't be able to work to help pay for my college. The number of scholarships and internships I could apply for would be drastically reduced to fewer than I could count on my fingers. And attending an out-of-state university would be virtually out of the question. However, I was always determined to provide my family with the better life that they'd been fighting for and fulfill my love of learning along the way. I wasn't going to let factors out of my control determine my own fate, so I did the best that I could with what I could control. I would read every book I could get my hands on, not only because I enjoyed reading, but also because I wanted to improve my English vocabulary. Uh, without, without access to internet at the time, I couldn't really just search up any new words I encountered, so I just had to do the best I could with the context of the sentences. My desire to my desire to succeed just fostered a sense of perseverance in me that proved crucial in overcoming many challenges I encountered in my life. But even then, I understand that I could not have made it this far without the help of numerous allies I encountered in my path. The first of those allies came in the form of a small nonprofit organization in my community called Building Futures Now. They introduced me and my family to the concept of private schools and helped me throughout my entire application process to get into Menlo School, a prestigious middle and high school in Atherton, California. I could even safely say that I would not be standing here right now talking to you all at Claremont McKenna College without the help of a college access program called Peninsula Bridge, uh, without the help of my counselors, Amy Wong, Rene Jimenez, and my mentor, Monroe Lebuis. While all of these allies helped me in my first generation and undocumented identities, I firmly believe that anyone can be an ally to anyone. Regardless of the identities you choose to align yourself with, I'm sure that every single person in this room has felt empowered in one way or another through allyship. After all, being there for people who can't stand up for themselves or whose voices have been marginalized is at the very heart of human compassion. That is why I urge you all today to be an ally for the undocumented community. Because as you, can now, as you can see now, this issue isn't as far removed as we may have thought initially. It affects our own community. It affects our classmates. It affects our friends, even if we do not know it. And we must act now, or if otherwise we, we risk losing our future doctors, our future lawyers, our future leaders of American society. That is why I ask you all today to be an ally, to support meaningful immigration reform, and to call for institutional change at the Claremont Colleges to provide more resources for undocumented students. While all of this may seem a little far-fetched or maybe far-removed to you all, 
I would like to remind you that everything begins with the first step. And you can make the first step today by registering and showing your support for the 2023 5K Dream Run, uh, which, is hosted, which is going to be hosted this Sunday, April 23rd. Uh, and it will be a fundraiser in support of the undocumented students at the Claremont Colleges. Thank you all for your time.